There was a moment, or maybe a series of moments, during those 10 days where this kind of quiet awakening occurs. It's like you've been asleep. Maybe you've been sleepwalking through your life, and just with the sounds of the birds and the rustling trees and the peaceful views and epic sunsets, suddenly you're awake and alive again. People asked me, why South Africa? And I could have rattled off something about elephants and lions and wine tastings and all the things I knew I'd be seeing that was written down in the itinerary, but instead I just said, why not? Why not South Africa? To be honest, I didn't know what to expect. Most of us have this very generic um, National Geographic baseline understanding of what this place is actually like. And until you set foot there for yourself, you won't know just how rich and diverse and absolutely stunning South Africa really is. Did you know that an elephant has 40,000 muscles in its trunk? Or that a group of zebras is called a dazzle? Or that the eland is considered the most spiritual and symbolic animal in South Africa, and it's also one of the earliest animals portrayed in cave paintings? Lita Willer is the founder of Workshops in SA, and in early 2020, right around the time that the COVID-19 pandemic hit, she reached out to me over Instagram about having me teach a masterclass in her home country. She explained to me that her workshops consist of much more than the artist demoing or teaching all day. Uh, these classes are unique in that it is a class, but also a tour of the surrounding countryside with all of its plants, mountains, and of course, the animals. While some of Toledo's other visiting instructors have focused mainly on landscape or just portraiture, I would be the first to teach everything from plein air to floral painting to portraits to the figure in the landscape. And even though we'd never met in person, Toledo had total faith that I'd be able to pull it off. So after two years of planning and getting students signed up to join us, the time finally came for us to take that long 15 hour plane ride. And boy, I, I remember leaving my family thinking, what have I gotten myself into? When you're a mom of young kids, there's really no convenient time to just up and leave them. But thankfully I had my husband's full support and I knew in my heart that this was what I was supposed to be doing. It's been a bucket list dream of mine to teach an international workshop. And here I was packing my converter adapters and flashing my passport at customs and watching the United States disappear beneath the clouds. And I took that long flight and I used the time I had to meditate on just what a gift this was to be able to have this opportunity to share my knowledge and love of art with a group of eager students and to experience new things together. Now I realize that it takes a big step of faith to spend this much money on a trip that seems so very far away with an instructor you may not have worked with before. My students quickly discovered that when I teach, I give them my undivided attention. I don't check out, I don't take breaks or step out. When I'm teaching, I'm on. Anna Rose Bain is a gifted instructor. She has the ability to paint and explain every step of her process, which is so helpful. Her sense of design is truly amazing. I would highly recommend taking a workshop with Anna Rose Bain, no matter where it is. It was really fun to teach and demo uh, a variety of subject matter, but of course, portraits have always been my specialty. So there was just something a little extra about those demos. One morning, uh, I got to paint Talita's beautiful daughter, Cecilia, and in the afternoon, the students painted a girl named MJ who worked right there at the game lodge as part of the wait staff. It was really magical to see her expression just light up, not just when we asked her to model for us, but when she posed like a total pro and everyone was so excited. The energy was just infectious. I love it when someone who's never modeled before gets to see themselves in a work of art. I'm sure when she woke up that morning, she thought it was just gonna be another normal day. If you love to travel and you love to paint, I can't recommend going to South Africa with Anna Rose Bain enough. It was a wonderful experience. She's a really talented and skilled teacher. She has this great ability to articulate what's happening in her head and how that's translating onto the canvas to describe what she's seeing. It's invaluable as an artist to hear that coming from somebody that you respect and who is as talented as she is. She provides gives feedback in a way 
that was really specific to what was happening in your painting, not necessarily what was happening in the group as a whole, which I really appreciated. So can't recommend enough. Go for it. I chose to take the workshop in South Africa because of Anna Rose Bain. This was my second workshop with her. Anna Rose has a compassionate and respectful teaching style while offering valuable feedback. She has the innate ability to verbally share her processes while painting. That in itself is a special skill. Her joy and love of painting shows the dedication to her practice as well as sharing it with her students. Her sensitivity to each student and excellent teaching skills made for a memorable trip. Anna Rose Bain is an observant and patient instructor, mindful of your abilities as an artist in whatever medium or composition. I certainly would recommend her for a workshop. Cheers! Cheers! Cheers. Cheers. To the lions! Yeah, lions! So there was the teaching side of things, and then there were the adventures. So in the Western Cape, there's five different wine regions. And where Toledo lives, it's right in the heart of it all. So our first couple of days of the workshop, we spent in wine country. We were painting there. We were eating like queens <laughs> and kings. Um, and we got to try the wine and pair it with chocolate. And it, it was just a very rich cultural experience for us all. One of our fun stops in between the game reserves that we were staying at was the Kango Caves. There's one cavern that is so huge, it was actually used as an amphitheater for quite a few years. Um, and since then, of course, they've, they've shut it down to conserve the cave. But uh, we were able to record our tour guide actually singing inside the cavern, and it was just magical. Well, I got love, love, love. Well, I got love deep down my soul. Because there's something about the spirit of Jesus that gives me such love, 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 love. Bravo. <laughs> Bravo. The most magical experience for me personally happened at our first game lodge, which was called Buffles Drift. You stay in these beautiful luxury tents next to a pond where the hippos live. And of course, you're gated off from the hippos, which is good because they are very dangerous. But they have three grown elephants that are about you know, between the ages of 18 and 23, I believe. And these elephants are rescues. Their parents were killed by poachers. And so they now have a very happy life there at Buffalo's Drift. But the cool thing about this experience is that you get to go and touch the elephants and touch their, their tusks and their ears and their, their trunks. And then at the very end, all three of them come in and give you a giant hug. Um, never could I have imagined what that would feel like. It was actually very scratchy, um, but <laughs> certainly one of the most amazing things I've ever gotten to experience. We went on safari almost every day of the trip, and let me tell you, it never got old. Even if it was chilly in the mornings and we had to throw on a poncho and bundle up, it didn't matter. It was always, always worth it. I imagined that my first safari would be like that scene from Jurassic Park where you enter the valley and you see the dinosaurs for the first time, but in fact, yes, this was a lot like that, especially with the giraffes. At Buffles Drift, the giraffes tend to like to hang out at the tops of the mountains, and so their heads just stick up from the highest points, and you can see them from very far away. Um, truly an amazing sight, just so majestic. Seeing an animal in the zoo can never compare to seeing that same animal in all its glory in the wild. We got to see rhinos, hippos, zebras, cape buffalo, elephants of course, <laughs> wildebeest, and all different kinds of antelope, cheetahs. Uh, one had just caught an ostrich and was laying there very contentedly flicking her tail. And then on another game drive, we got to see a whole family of cheetahs, a mother and her three cubs, and they were eating a freshly killed impala. And that was just remarkable. I'll never forget actually the sounds that they made. <laughs> Pretty amazing. We saw giraffes, of course, at every place. And even though it was fall there in South Africa, still lots of baby animal sightings, including the cutest baby oryx. And then there were the lions. Look how he's licking it. Yeah, the tongue of a lion is like a sandpaper. It licks all the meat away from the bone with the tongue. Mm -hmm. 
So it's easy to eat also like this. Look, he's looking. Josh, is he looking? Oh, oh yes. Yeah. <laughs> see his nose. Look at that. Did you see the tail? Yes. That's a warning. You see that? I'm on a horse. Yay. And I got on all by myself. And what is his name? Yachter. Yachter. Well done, Anna. <laughs> At Bottler's Cup, our last game reserve of the trip, I had the incredible opportunity to do a horseback safari. It was just Talita and I and our guide, Carly. But the cool thing about riding a horse through the reserve is that the animals trust the horses. We're waiting to go in. But there's elephants right by the gate. Okay, so the elephants actually don't. So we had to go around the back way, which meant traversing a tiny footpath on a steep hillside, followed by multiple water crossings. But eventually we made it, and even though that last water crossing had me soaked up to my thighs, I just could not wipe the smile off my face. I think I've shared some of my story with you guys in the past, but for those of you who don't know, I was deathly allergic to horses as a kid. We had a horse on our little farm, and I would try to ride him, and every time no matter how much I doped up on Benadryl or wore masks or took my inhaler, it just didn't matter. I'd be miserable every time. So horses were actually the reason I became an artist. I couldn't ride them, but I could draw them. So fast forward about 25 years and here I am trying it out for the first time since I was a kid. I was really nervous that I'd have an allergic reaction, but by God's grace, I had no issues whatsoever and that sweet little horse I was riding <laughs> proved to be incredibly sure-footed and well-mannered. I got to trot, we cantered across the meadow with wildebeest and impalas surrounding us. We actually rode right up to the rhinos and the giraffes and it was truly an experience I'll never forget. And now I know I can ride horses again, yay! <laughs> At the start of the workshop, I told my students that my hope for them as an instructor was to help open up that sense of childlike wonder. So now, now we are about to start. And maybe awaken a part of them that was buried beneath the busyness and the burnout that we've all dealt with in our everyday lives. I said, maybe you'll discover a side of you that you didn't even know existed, where you feel empowered, alive, and just like anything is possible. By the end of the 10 days, you could just tell that every single person there was going to go home changed. Not just changed, but transformed for the better. Completely awestruck by what we had gotten to see and experience, and we went home having grown and having learned from each other in ways we could not have anticipated. If you have a chance to take a workshop with Workshops in SA, jump on it. It's gonna change your life, I promise.